All right, square toe versus pointed toe. Everybody always asks me which one I prefer, and I love them both. I wouldn't be able to pick just one. I don't think I'd be able to live with just one boot. Thankfully, we have multiple options of boots for us to choose from for different scenarios and different uh, situations. So today we'll go over kind of those situations and what I use each boot for and which one might be my favorite. If I was stuck with the choice to pick one, which one would I go with? So let's start with the square toe. So I love the square toe boot. It's a very broad, wide boot. When you put this boot on, it's almost like wearing a sneaker or something like that. It's like wearing any other shoe. Your foot is flat on the ground. You have plenty of walking space. Once you break in this boot, you can kind of, you know, walk easily, casually, no issues whatsoever. Um, the only thing uh, that you have to worry about with this boot is the jean selection that you have, like the options of, of jeans that you can wear with it. Um, this boot being wider it takes a little bit more skin to make it was a lot it's a lot more boot here than it is on what would be a pointed toe boot all right i mean it probably takes a good half of another half of what it takes to make this boot so it goes wide it goes taller but because of how broad the heel is this shaft has to be wider so they make jeans called buka jeans to go over the shaft that's why you see a lot of people, uh, maybe you don't, you see a lot of people trying to cheat um, the system, right? They try and like duct tape their boot like this and try and get their shaft not to print on their jeans because they're wearing straight like jeans or like skinny jeans or something with like a broad square toe boot. You can easily fix that problem by wearing a pointed toe boot. And that's what I do. I don't try and cheat the system. I don't try and like, um, you know, make a boot look better with a certain jean that it's not supposed to be worn with, right? Like, if you wear this boot with the proper fitting jean, let's say it's a, um, like a boot cut jean, that boot is gonna go over this boot, drag the ground, you're gonna rip the bottom of your jeans up. Not saying you wasted the jeans, you can still wear them for work and stuff like that, but it doesn't look as good. So, that goes into like the kind of situations that I will wear this boot with. I will wear this boot with like a boot cut jean, something where I want a broader statement for my boot. I mean, you cannot miss an exotic skin. That's one of the reasons I love them. You cannot miss an exotic skin on a square toe boot. It just always looks classy. Um, and it's definitely something you wanna have in your collection. If you are a person that just has narrow pointed toe boots, you might wanna try a broad square toe if you're going to a nice establishment or something like that. And these things are great with working, right? Like if you are if you have to wear a boot all day and you do kind of like, um, let's say horse work and you do ride, this boot is gonna be great for comfort if you're mixing the ground with the saddle. I mean, I probably wouldn't go with an ostrich skin, but let's say something like this. Um, you know, this is a great boot, nylon bottom, um, tin haul, gives you a little bit more grip than what a leather bottom would. But this was a great boot to mix with working and then riding. But the only thing, and the most important thing with a square toe boot is that these things can get you hung up in your stirrups. If you, um, have an issue with your horse when he goes to buck in this thing can twist and get you hung up if you fall off you're gonna get dragged for a little bit um, so you, you really have to be careful um, the kind of pairing that you have with your boots and your stirrups if you're riding so if you're a rider and you're watching this video I would not recommend that you go with a square toe there's so many more options on the market now and we'll kind of get into that later with this right here being a better square toe option if you're gonna be riding you don't have to worry about getting hung up in your stirrups and i have a saddle here i hope you can see it but i'll just try and simulate what i mean by like getting hung up so that that's one situation there right like you're bent up you can't get out um you're gonna get twisted up you're gonna get twisted up here you're not gonna be able to get out you're gonna be stuck. And if you ever get in a situation like that, best thing you can do is relax and try and figure out what's causing you to be there. Um, but, and we'll show you this later, but this thing, you can't really get that stuck. You have to be like trying to get that stuck in there with the pointed toe boot. So I absolutely love a, a square toe boot. Um, you only have two flaws with a square toe boot. That is your jean options, and um, that is your riding, right? Like if you're riding in a narrow stirrup, most 
saddles that you get are going to have a pretty narrow stirrup that comes in them. Not really narrow. They're all like pretty wide. But what I'm saying is if you want to ride a square toe boot, which there's definitely a many benefits to it. Like I said, mixing the ground with the saddle is a, is a great thing with a square toe boot. But you are going to want to have the upsize on your stirrups that you're riding in. Um, and that's pretty much it with this boot. If you guys have any more questions about the square toe, please drop them in the comments. And at this point in the video, please go like and subscribe. That way I can continue to make this stuff for you. Because I'm new to this and I'm trying to learn how to be a YouTuber. Alright, so let's get into the pointed toe boot. So this right here, one of my favorites, I'd have to say. And, and my whole collection, honestly, this boot right here is... And the pointed toe boot is probably always going to be my favorite boot because it's timeless, right? Like, these things are, are kind of trendy, right? Like, this wasn't even... The square toe boot wasn't even that cool to wear until, like, after I graduated high school, right? I had a pair of... I had a pair of ostrich skins in high school. I honestly, it looked a lot like this, but it was like a, a tanner boot. I had it, had it in high school, and everybody was wearing these in high school. My grandfather had boots like this. My grandmother had boots like this like the square toe boot wasn't something i seen until after i graduated high school which i graduated in 2012 um and i mean if you look at some of your classic cowboys if you look at the, the pictures and stuff like that you never really see a square toe boot even though your original boot, cowboy boots were like you know like a handmade leather hide that was going to be like a square toe that was traditionally there like a, there is history of a square toe boot but when you look back in our time, right, like like the last hundred years, I'll say, um, probably less than that. But let's say the last hundred years, when you look back at cowboy culture and kind of like the icons from television or your icons in rodeo, it, this was kind of more predominant. And um, that I think that has to do a lot with kind of the television of cowboy and what cowboy was. And all of it is kind of like a... A statement that comes from John Wayne movies and eight seconds and things like that. Like Lane Frost fashion, getting back to this boot, Lane Frost fashion is a it's a deep motivator for me to love this style of boot. George Strait's a heavy motivator for me to love this style of boot. Um Alan Jackson style, even Garth Brooks style is a heavy motivator for me to love this style of boot and the way that they wore it. The fashion of this boot is just timeless, right? And I think that's why I prefer this boot when it comes to style because it's timeless and I feel like it's always going to be timeless as long as I've been alive this boot has been cool it's always been the statement it's been the sig the signature cowboy boot that taller shaft the arched heel meant for kind of just getting up and getting seated in the stirrups correctly that narrow toe meant for getting in there easily and not getting bound up or anything like that now if you've never walked in one a pointed toe boot it does have your your toes kind of slanted it's not a full foot on the ground it's not the easiest to run in it's going to be comfortable i mean uncomfortable to run in your feet are going to be kind of like banging up against the corners and stuff if you're doing anything like that in it but once you get used to it once you break it in this boot is just as comfortable as any to walk in and so going back to the the reasons i would use this is obviously the saddle it's not getting it's not getting bound up you can strap um your your uh spurs on this just fine you don't need a spur shelf like this in order to have spurs right you can you can put your purse straps on you can wire them under your heel it's going to stay on just fine you do not need a spur shelf um a lot of people think that they need a spur shelf it does make it a little easier but you don't you do not need that on your boots you do have a little lip here but it's, it's nothing crazy um but yeah, it's it's a great great looking boot, great looking style. It's a timeless style, and I think everybody should have these in your collection. Doesn't matter if you cowboy or not. It's something that you can put on with a suit, and it looks good. Um, it's just always going to be timeless, especially in like an exotic skin like this. And so what I what I do is I wear um, Wrangler cowboy cuts for this. That's my favorite thing to wear with these. I starch them up. Um, I have a pair here, so I can kind of show you how these would go over the shaft of your boot, right? Because I can kind of show my point with the square toe is not really working with a lot of jeans and this one working with a lot. Even if you were to wear a wider boot cut jean, like I was saying earlier, that would go around the boot all the way. So you see that, how that goes. I don't know, I'll probably flip it the other way. See that goes all the way down there 
if you wanted to go all the way past it, you could, but it's not going to do that just naturally where you're dragging it on the ground. But that is how your boot, your your pant leg should fit over your boot. This is going to stack up very nicely. I get my jeans two sizes up in length, so it stacks over it really nicely. That is how a jean should go over your boot. Now, this is going to be a perfect example because it has this um, boot, uh, what you call it, inside of it that keeps it a little wider. But a lot of people wear boots, and we see you all the time, where your jean is not coming down to the actual shelf of, of your boot. And as long as it stacks high up here, it looks good, but don't be wearing high waters um, with, your, with your boots. And also, if you get a boot cut jean, like the Ariat M5s is what I wear when I'm wearing like a boot like this, this is gonna go down to your shelf and it's gonna look perfect. So another thing with square toe boots is you don't have as many jean options, but there are some jean options out there where you don't have to go taping your um, taping your boots up, trying to make it work. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite. Um, this is something I will always have. Hopefully, I will always have a good pair of cowboy boots that are traditional pointy toe because it just looks amazing. But going into a happy medium, right? So I showed these earlier. These narrow square toes are a great happy medium between cowboy boots. Um, you want to have your feet on the ground, right? Like if you're, let's say a roper, if you if you have to mix the ground with the saddle, if you have to run down to a calf, um, you want to have your foot on the ground. Like you want to be able to actually plant down and do it and have your balance. But you don't want to get stuck in the stirrups on your dismount. You don't want anything interrupting you when getting off of that horse and getting down that rope. And so this is a great happy medium, but having that narrower square toe where your feet are still kind of spread out, where you can still run um, and get to where you need to go, but it's not going to get you hung up. And it does have a spur shelf on it. Like I said, not absolutely necessary, but it is good to have one. It does make things a little easier and a, a little more sturdy and in place. Um, so yeah, this is a great happy medium. These are the area uh, fraternities. They have a foam pad inside of them. They're incredibly comfortable if you want to check out one of these like rough out style, um, narrow uh, square toe boots. I think um, R. Watson makes great ones as well. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it when it comes to the comparison between the two and why you would have one or the other. If I had to pick a favorite, I'm going with this. You just get more jean options. You get um, no issues in the saddle. You get um, timeless style and fashion, right? These are just going to be cool forever. No matter where you go, these are going to be cool and they're going to work. Um, this, I think it's I think it's uh, like a trend almost, you know, I think it's um, I think it's temporary. It'll come back around like everything does, but this is, is here to stay. So I'm going to have to go with this. If I had to pick one favorite, I'm going with this. Even the, the new style here, these narrow square toes, um, I'd have to go with the, the traditional pointed toes over these as well. It just doesn't look as good to me. It's comfortable. It works, but it just it doesn't look as good. Just classic. Well, there you go. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, hopefully that answers your question and why you would buy one over the other. And um, hopefully I can get another video out for you. I'll compare every style of boot because there is actually so many more than just what I've showed you today. There's so many more styles than just a square toe and a point and toe. So please like and subscribe so I can get that next video out to you guys. And y'all keep cowboying on.